Project Reproduction is a Canada-wide initiative that targeted illicit firearms trafficking and manufacturing. This was a joint forces initiative led by Quebec's integrated team against firearms trafficking known as EILTA. Ultimately, Project Reproduction saw search warrants executed across eight provinces and 46 different municipalities. Alert investigated a total of seven targets and searched homes in Grand Prairie, Penhold, Innisfil, Brooks, Lac Saint Anne County, and two homes in Lloydminster. What you're seeing today is the evidence seized from just three of our search locations. These illegal firearms are produced without serial numbers, without any meaningful testing, with no licensing requirements, and without regard for public safety. For the most part, these are fully functional firearms that are being manufactured in our neighborhoods. 3D printed firearms can take place on I'm generalizing three levels where you might have someone experimenting with the production of them. Uh, you'd have them uh, trafficking and selling them and organized crime groups involved with them. But it is, firearms trafficking is a commodity, uh, just like drugs. Uh, there, there is a price for it, there is a market for it. Violence is a major part of organized crime groups and networks. Access to firearms is a, a, a you know, ever evolving and uh, growing threat as it relates to that. And 3D printed firearms are now just another uh, avenue for criminal networks to gain access to that. So my concern is uh, people producing those and then those getting into the wrong hands. This is taking place and to get the message to those who uh, are utilizing 3D printers for legit legal reasons that may be thinking of experimenting into the firearms aspect that that is illegal activity. Uh, and you know, if we can at least get that messaging out, I think that's the, the first step in order of uh, combating this and at least getting uh, the knowledge out to the general public so that uh, the public can inform police if they have information as it relates to ongoing uh, 3D printing as it relates to firearms trafficking. You take your base base design, this is this is essentially a Glock handgun. Um, it fits these those rails we were talking about, the FMDA rails. And so the rails are really the point, like the wear point on a firearm. So that's where they're using the metal rails in here. Um, and so as long as those rails fit and the conventional firearms parts fit, um, it will work, right? So you could change the grip. You could print it in any color you wanted just based on the filament you were using. Um, but yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a tough question, right? What, what haven't we seen? Uh, every day new stuff is coming out. It is made to emulate a conventional Glock handgun, right? It's designed to function. It's designed to use their parts, right? So they're using conventional barrels, conventional slides, conventional parts. Uh, it's there's just circumventing the serialized part. When you look at a roll of filament, so if you're using that basic PLA stuff for about thirty dollars a roll, you can get uh, ten handgun frames out of a roll. So when you say the, there's a limit to what you can do with a three D printer, uh, like that limit is really down to the imagination and your ability to design these new unconventional firearms.